To make it easier to follow along with the lesson, please reset your user settings or make sure your mouse presets are on the three button or regular mouse. If you do not know how to change your settings, please watch our UI video first. For those using Marvelous Designer 9.5 and above, we have grouped more tools together for a cleaner user interface. Please long press the left mouse button on the tool to view a list of all of the tools in the tool group. Welcome to the Marvelous Designer Basic Garment Tutorials. In this tutorial, we are going to cover how to make basic pockets. So to start the tutorial, we are going to turn off gravity. So in the 3D window, right click, go to Simulation Properties, go to Gravity and make gravity value of zero. This will make it easier again. This will make it easier for our fold lines to settle in place because we do have pockets with pleats. Then we are going to create a large piece of fabric that we are going to sew all of our pockets to. So going up to the toolbar, long pressing the pattern making group and choosing rectangle, or you can use the S key. And then clicking once in the 2D window, we'll create a 500 millimeter square. This is a good size for our canvas. And in the 2D window or 3D window, you can right click and choose freeze because we do want it to stay because we want this pattern to be stationary then to make it a little easier we don't really need to see the fabric texture in the 2d window so we can toggle that on or off by going up to the toolbar and choosing show 2d textures or using the shift t hotkeys now that we've created our workspace let's go ahead and zoom in and then we're going to start creating our pockets the first pocket we are going to make is going to be a pleated patch pocket. So it's going to be similar to the box pleat that you made on the shirt, except for this is going to be a pocket. This is often considered a cargo pocket. So going up to the toolbar, long pressing the internal tools group and choosing the internal rectangle tool, we're going to be creating half of our pocket. Now that we've created half of our pocket, you can right click with the transform pattern tool and choose clone as pattern, or you can use control shift C. And then we can bring that over to the left and place that in our workspace. We now have a pattern that perfectly matches our internal line. So zooming in a little bit closer, we're going to go ahead and create our box pleat or cargo pocket. So going up to the toolbar and swapping over to the edit pattern tool or the Z hotkey, selecting the rightmost line segment, right click and choose offset pattern outline. We've used this before, but in this case we are going to do, in this case we're going to do more than one offset. So we want the pleat to be about a third of the finished size of the pocket. I'm going to choose 12.5 millimeters if that doesn't look the correct size to you, feel free to make it a different number. And we are going to do two offsets because we have the fold portion and then the outer portion. So remember every three, one, two, three pieces creates one finished pleat. And a box pleat is two knife pleats together. Once you've done that, select create internal lines. This will make those offsets or every 12.5 millimeter that's inside of the pattern an internal line, which we will use to create our pleat. And then select OK. Once you've done that, let's go ahead and right click our rightmost segment line and unfold. And this might look familiar to you if you have done the pleating tutorial. This looks very similar to the box pleat going up to the toolbar and choosing the pleats fold tool and selecting those four internal lines, double clicking, select box pleat. Looking at our pleats, we have the blue going in and the red going out. So our pleat is going to be on the outside. That is what we want and select okay. And let's zoom in in the 3D window as well. And because gravity is off, let's go ahead and simulate and it should fold into place. Turn off simulation and let's go ahead and sew this onto our fabric. 
So what we do need to do is we do need to unfold our internal rectangle. So right click, unfold. And we have the perfect shape that our pocket will sew onto. Now on to sewing. As we have done previously, we are going to manually sew our box pleats in place using the free sewing tool or the M hotkey. You can do that in the 3D window or you can do that in the 2D window, whichever you prefer. I'm going to do it in the 2D window. And make sure that you choose free sewing. At the very least, using the free sewing tool to sew the edges in place to the larger body using the ghost as a reference so you can sew it to the exact length. As you can see, a little blue ghost will appear and I can stop it there. And simulate. And if something like this happens, don't worry. It's because this is a relatively small pattern piece. So turning off simulation, if I select my pattern, and I go down to particle distance, it's at 20 particle distance. So bring that down to 10 and simulate again, and that'll fix any sort of collision problems. And as always, using the edit sewing tool, select all of your sewing lines and make sure they are on turned. Now let's go ahead. Now that we have completed sewing our pleat to itself, Let's go ahead and sew our pocket into place. Very simple, just go ahead and sew to the edge and sewing the edges together. And then in the 3D window, just pull it over and simulate. And it brings your pocket into place. So this is a very simple patch pocket. If you want to do a more complex cargo pocket, you can use this pattern and make some simple changes to it, which we will show you how to do. So let's go ahead and just make copies of each, the internal line and the pattern piece. Just copying and pasting, and then just moving the copy to the left of the internal line it's going to sew into in both the 2D and the 3D windows. So what we're going to do now is turn this simple patch pocket into something like a pouch pocket. So it has a larger space. A very simple way to do this is going up to the edit pattern tool. We are going to modify the sewn segment lines, selecting the sides and the bottoms and ignoring the pleat. And right click and we're going to choose offset pattern outline again. We're not doing two offsets and we'll keep it at the 12.5 millimeter offset and we will keep it at internal lines. And what we're going to do different here is choose unfilled corner because we're going to sew the corners together to create this into a larger pouch. Once you've done this, select OK and it'll appear in the 3D window, but this will affect your sewing. So go to edit sewing tool and it does affect just that last edge. So go ahead and delete them. Then reapplying your sewing using the free sewing tool and sewing them back in using that internal line. Because you created internal lines, you can easily fix that sewing line. And then go ahead and sew your corners together, making sure that you sew them in the correct direction. And sewing your bottom as well. Once you've done that, we're going to swap over to the edit pattern tool and we're going to apply a fold angle to our edges. Selecting the edit pattern tool and then select those internal lines that were once the outlines and then going to the fold angle and we're selecting zero. This will push them back. So go ahead and simulate. And now you have a pocket that's more like a pouch. And again, we're gonna go ahead and sew them to that internal line, turning off simulation. And then you can use free sewing or the segment sewing tool, just sew those segments to their corresponding edges on your internal line. 
and then just pull it over and simulate. And now you have a simple pouch pocket with a border of a half an inch, which could potentially hold objects inside of it. Next, we're going to go on to much simpler basic pockets. But first, let's go ahead and freeze these in place just to make it a little easier. Selecting our pattern pieces, holding Shift and selecting Freeze or Control K. Just so they'll stay in place. Those are the most difficult pockets in this tutorial, so let's go ahead and create some basic patch pockets like you would see on jeans or on a sweatshirt. So, going up to the toolbar, choosing the internal tools again, and choosing the internal polygon or line tool. We're going to create a jean or denim pocket that you would generally see on the back of a pair of pants. So let's go ahead and zoom in. And we're going to create them just by drawing. But in this case, we're going to use the mirror creation feature. So click once with the left mouse and then create your straight line, right click, and you get your create internal polygon pop-up. So you can edit the length to be specific as well as you have the option. And under that you have mirror creation. It's currently turned off, so let's turn that on. We have local mirror, we have x-axis mirror, and we have y-axis mirror. So because we're doing this vertically, we do want to mirror across the y-axis. It's being mirrored on the y-axis, which will make it a lot faster, and I don't have to do a step, which is the unfold step. So I'm just going to create my pocket. Creating a slightly angled five-sided polygon here. Same as before, we are going to create a pattern copy of this by going up to the toolbar using the Transform Pattern tool. Right click, choose Clone as Pattern. I'm going to move it up and put it above. And then we can sew it in place using the free sewing tool and sew it to our internal line. And in this case, when it's a patch pocket and it doesn't have any pleats, you can right click and choose superimpose over and it places it right over that shape. Go ahead and simulate and you have your pocket in place. Now for a sweater, very simple, very similar a kangaroo pocket. If you want to have, let's just say, a zipper on it, so it's going to be half of the sweatshirt, we're going to use internal polygon line tool. We're going to create a half kangaroo pocket. So just creating that shape. It looks like a rectangle with a piece cut out of it, so it's slightly wider on the bottom. And this just got an angle where the hand goes through. Again, just drawing it in there. You can always change the shape later if you want, like this. Whatever shape you like. Once you've created your half kangaroo pocket, we're going to do the same thing and copy this as a pattern. I'm just choosing right click, clone as pattern, and we're going to sew it in place. Remembering to leave the hand hole open which is this little diagonal line here. Once again, using the free sewing tool to sew it into place. Sew around the top and the side and do the same thing. And right click, superimpose over. And you can turn on simulation. And there is your kangaroo pouch pocket in place. Now for this one, I'm going to show you a little trick. If you want it to be bagging out just a little bit, like you want this to look like a hand has been in there or it's been stretched out, you can easily create this effect by making the pocket bag slightly wider. Here I'm using the Transform Pattern tool to adjust its shape. Or using the Edit Pattern tool, you can select one of the segment lines and pull it. Be cautious if you do too much, it might gather. And then go ahead and simulate again. And you can see here that it has been stretched out. And then you can use the Edit Curvature tool and just pull this down 
to give it a curved shape like that line has been stretched. Simulating again. There you go. That's one way to get this look. Stepping back. You can use the you can use the steam tool which is up on the toolbar if you select steam with this tool you can shrink or stretch the pattern piece without actually manipulating the pattern itself normally it's on shrinkage but if you make it plus three and just make it slightly wider here where a hand would be pushing in and stretching it just a little bit not too much and if you simulate you can see here that volume has been added, but it doesn't change the pattern, so keep that in mind. You would need to then adjust the curvature as well. So those are a few options for making a more stressed or stretched out pocket. And lastly, I'm going to show you how to make a very quick curved pocket. We're going to use the internal rectangle tool click and drag just to create a square doesn't really matter the shape and on the bottom segment right click and choose split and we're going to uniform split on the pop-up window adding a segment point in the center next going up to the toolbar and choosing the smooth curve tool with the smooth curve tool I can easily adjust my curves and smooth them out like it says or I can select a segment point and create a curve in that corner, which makes it very easy to make perfect curves like this. Selecting the transform pattern tool, and we're going to make this a pattern again, and then sew it in place using the free sewing tool. And superposing over. And then you can simulate and that's a way to make a simple really quick curved corner pocket that you will see sometimes on a lot of shirts and let's go ahead the last thing we're going to do is create a pocket flap so let's just say for your cargo pocket you want to make sure that you can close it you'll see some pants that have buttons with them on velcro and the like so let's go ahead and create a pocket flap for our cargo pockets Similar to creating a patch pocket, but we're just sewing the top. Going up to the toolbar and selecting the internal polygon tool. We're going to create our pocket by starting from the center. Right clicking because we will just use mirror creation to make this a little faster. Going to option, local, Y axis. And now we can mirror create. And I'm creating a pentagon shaped pocket flap but you don't have to you can have it be rectangle just make sure whatever you do it is the it is slightly wider than the actual pocket itself once you've created that we're going to do the same thing as we've done before with all of our patch pockets right click and clone as pattern once you've cloned it as a pattern, we can now go ahead and apply our button and our buttonhole. Going up to buttonhole, we're going to place that on the pocket flap. I'm just placing it right in the center, connecting it in between those two segment points. And then for the button, I'm just placing it on our pleat. And then using the free sewing tool, I'm just sewing the top of the pocket flap to the top of the internal line. And in the 3D window, we're not selecting superimpose over, we're going to choose superimpose side. Using the gizmo to correctly orient the pocket. Using the fasten button tool, we will then put the button through the buttonhole. Selecting the button through the buttonhole and then go ahead and simulate. Once it's in place, we can reactivate our pocket by right-clicking and choosing Unfreeze or Control-K. And here you can make adjustments if you need to. If you need to make this a little bit taller, go right ahead, simulate. 
feel free to edit or play with your pockets until you are happy with how they look. And that is how to create some basic pockets. Now let's go ahead and save this by turning off simulation and going up to File, Save As, Garment. Go ahead and save this to whichever folder you wish. I'm choosing Finished Garments and then I'm saving it as File Name Pockets. Now make sure to save this as a garment because we are going to be using this patch pocket for another project coming up in this tutorial series. And that finishes it for this pocket tutorial. Thank you for watching and follow the links here to the next lessons. If you liked this video, hit the like button below and subscribe for more. If you have any questions about getting started in Marvelous Designer or this lesson, please leave a comment below and we will do our best to answer your questions. If you want more information on Marvelous Designer, check out our website, forum, and official Discord channels, which are all linked in the description box below.